Okay, so supposedly we are live on all channels. Again, we still have some time um, until uh, people connect. And yeah, I plan to be quite relaxed. So we can wait for a few more minutes. Uh, yeah. And I'm setting uh, the last notice uh, to the team chat, just in case. So just in case, I will uh, check whether YouTube is live. YouTube should be. I see Simon from YouTube in the comments. Exactly. And uh, when you see comments, you can uh, click uh, a button to highlight them. Mm. Um, yeah, so something like that. Okay. Um, and yeah, we will start in one minute. Mm. I'm just checking that everything is going okay, but it seems so. The YouTube channel is a bit complicated always, uh, but yeah, from what it seems, uh, the stream is doing okay. Mm -hmm. And yes, we are live on YouTube too. So just one second and we go ahead with the presentation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, I'm just, I'm still trying to post a link and then close all the channels, which is probably the most complicated thing today. <laughs> yeah, I had quite a rough week with a lot of travel, a lot uh, of different events, like having a ride in the night uh, back to my city, uh, something like 200 kilometers. Uh, so yeah, wow. I feel a little bit dizzy. And yeah, if you're following uh, the global events in Russia, yeah, you may have noticed that the weekend wasn't exactly the most easy too. Uh, so yeah. Oh yeah, but, I mean, uh, like in Israel last week. <laughs> yeah, wow. Exactly. So I'm completely jet lagged, um, even without going outside uh, the European time zones. And uh, yeah, uh, hi everyone. So. Uh, now, um, now let's go forward. And first of all, thanks a lot uh, to Sarah for agreeing to host the meetup. So Sarah, uh, could you uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Just... Yeah, hi, I'm I'm Sarah. I do um, revenue operations mm -hmm. at Wiremock, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, really enjoy it. And uh, all the community staff. Uh, so yeah, we are looking forward to, to see you in the community channels too. And yeah, uh, today uh, the goal is uh, to have a short presentation about uh, what's going on uh, um, in the community, where we are going, and uh, we are recording this presentation, uh, so it will be later available to the community. There is no goal to have as many people as possible. We, we are really shy about the announcements. So from what I see, we have five people in the moment. Some people will join uh, through social media, etc. So we will see that in the stats. Uh, and um, yeah, for this presentation, feel free to just interrupt me as needed. Uh, so Sarah can ask a question at any moment. And I will be doing a short overview. And then the key focus will be uh, to discuss all your questions about the community, about uh, the challenges you see there. And if you have any questions, just drop them in the chat. And later we can uh, discuss them on YMOX Slack. So let me share my screen. Mm. Okay, and where are my slides? Okay. 
So that's what happens when you have uh, three Google Workspace accounts. Uh, but yeah, I'm ready. Uh, do you see my screen? Not yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's coming up Okay. Now. It takes some time. So we are using StreamYard as a backend. So this is why we're able to, um, to stream to all the channels. When we did the first presentation with Pass uh, two weeks ago, we used uh, the same framework. But now we do, did some enhancements in terms of connectivity. So hopefully, you all get HD right away. Uh, but yeah, if not, uh, please let us know in the feedback. So again, uh, today we talk about uh, why I'm uh, open ecosystem and where we're going. To some extent, it's a state of the union talk. So I want to talk about what we have at the moment, what we would like to achieve and share some statistics and some recent releases for the project. And let's go ahead. So if you haven't uh, met me yet, uh, my name is Oleg. Uh, I'm my community manager and developer advocate. I joined uh, YMOC Inc. Um, in April to help with building the open source community and ecosystem around it. Uh, but actually, I have been an active user of YMOC for almost uh, nine years by now. Um, yeah, I developed a lot of um, integration tests with YMOC when working on the Jenkins project, on uh, products based on that, and even before Jenkins. Actually, I applied it uh, quite a few times uh, for electronic design automation tools, which happen to talk to APIs quite a lot these days, too. So I'm also a CNCF ambassador, a Continuous Delivery Foundation ambassador, and I still remain on the Jenkins governing board. And well, I guess there are a few dozens of other public titles I have. <laughs> uh, so today, uh, when we uh, have a State of the Union talk, uh, the common question, I already actually got it in uh, DMs ahead of this session, is what we are actually talking about, whether it's community State of the Union talk or whether it's YMOC incorporated. Um, as also known as our small startup, State of the Union. For sure, today I talk about the community. I will be talking only about open source. But I decided that since there are questions, some disambiguation is actually needed. Because the company, YMOC, happens to be named the same. While YMOC itself is an open source project and open source community. And we are fully committed to that. So uh, just to quick extend uh, explanation, so YMOC Inc. is a company that started uh, uh, last year uh, and it offers YMOC Cloud as a SaaS product. Uh, it's based on YMOC. It includes a lot of value at features and basically it's a developer portal uh, for all kinds of development of APIs and uh, it also provides API mocking capabilities, same as YMOC. Uh, but uh, <coughs> Today, as I said, we uh, talk about uh, YMOC as open source. And the good news is that yeah, YMOC Cloud actually helps us to fund uh, YMOC development. This May, we got a, a seed investment round. So uh, this is why I was able uh, to join uh, the team. And this is why we are actually able to expand our investment in open source. So I hope it's uh, good news for everyone. And uh, in this uh, announcement, we actually mentioned a few things uh, that we would like to see in YMOC and open source, uh, including uh, new features uh, for YMOC and YMOC users, uh, also uh, improving uh, supportability of the products and extending the ecosystem for the popular languages. It actually triggered a lot of questions because YMOC is still, is still perceived by many as just a tool for Java, just a unit testing library, but in fact, it's not and uh, today we can uh, talk about other use cases and if you have some just uh, uh, drop the questions um, so um, I will talk briefly about uh, where we are as a community what are the recent releases uh, what actually happens with ecosystem as whole and where we are going and then we will talk specifically about uh, YMOC and what we would like uh, to achieve uh, in its ecosystem these slides are already public uh, their license under the Creative Commons license, so you can just uh, uh, take them if you're interested. And yeah, if you use YouTube or LinkedIn, there should be a link that is parsable. Uh, if not, I will share it later. Usually I put a, a QR code, but yeah, hopefully it's good enough. Okay. 
So yeah, uh, back to Wimok. Uh, so just a quick start. Uh, Wimok, as all of us know, the, it started as a Java library almost uh, 12 years ago. I believe that we will be celebrating uh, 12, 12 years in October, and hopefully we'll have quite a lot uh, to brag about. Uh, so Wimok is super popular. Now it has more than 5 million uh, download uh, per month from different locations. And actually, we have uh, two versions available in Wimok Java. So it's stable 2.x release. We're also working on the 3.x, which is currently in beta and uh, which is available uh, to Java developers. And many of you have already tried it. And uh, there is a lot more activities uh, going on. Uh, important thing that uh, Wimok actually keeps uh, growing and it keeps growing quite fast in terms of downloads, in terms of applications. First of all, it's because many companies actually adopt continuous integration and a continuous delivery as it's supposed to work. So there is more demand in, in developer tools, <coughs> more de demand in uh, fast testing, uh, and hence uh, Wimok uh, becomes more and more popular. The same for contributions, the same uh, for actually search queries. Wimok is trending um, everywhere and it's being used quite actively by many projects. So here I have a number of 181 contributors. Actually, this number is uh, just for uh, Wimok core. And if you're interested, we can get more numbers. Um, so I make no commitments uh, to stick to slides today. And um, yeah. So let me show how you uh, can get uh, this information. So there is Wimok community. And here there is a cauldron setup, which we configured uh, to get some basic metrics um, about uh, the community and how it's going. So here you can see that historically we had 279 uh, Git committers in all the repositories within Wimok GitHub organization. The actual number is probably around 500 if it take all the implementations that are currently outside. And the number of official submitters and contributors actually keeps growing. So you can easily find some uh, trends and changes there. But uh, yeah, uh, the um, project development is actually quite active and uh, there is a lot of activities going on. Um, what is important uh, that Wimok keeps expanding beyond Java. So uh, you may have seen Wimok standalone. So it's basically instance of Wimok that can be provisioned uh, and can serve uh, your API requests. Uh, there is also Wimok Cloud, which basically acts as a Wimok standalone. And also there are implementations for many different languages. Um, and we believe that the expansions of uh, uh, these applications and the expansion between beyond Java, beyond unit and integration tests is what we need as a tool. And this is what uh, we have been quite actively working on. Um, and I will show you a few examples later. Uh, so uh, we have at the moment quite a lot of different implementations. And thanks a lot to the community for doing these implementations. When I just started uh, why, with Wimok as a community manager, I created a Google Doc that, where I tried to capture um, all actively used uh, Wimok related repositories, including implementations, adapters, various developer tools, etc. And I counted something like uh, 50 repositories uh, for different languages, for different implementations. Some are more compatible, some are less compatible with Wimok. But it's actually a proof that uh, there is a high demand in similar API mocking, or as we also say, API simulation tools. Uh, so I believe that uh, Wimok is in a quite a good spot. <laughs> Regarding the implementations, as I said, we have Wimok Docker, um, which is um, basically a portable version. We also have Java Runtime, which is again portable to any environment where you can run Java and after some uh, magic applied uh, also Android. Um, and uh, yeah, there is also different implementations and adapters for different technology stacks that actually allows uh, Wimok uh, to be used uh, anywhere. Uh, so this is what uh, the state of the project, and actually it has been a state maybe for the five uh, last years. Most of the implementations have been created 
uh, before most of the implementations are still active and being widely used. And at the same time, uh, we clearly see that uh, there is demand uh, in having some consolidation and in having some alignment between these implementations. And uh, there are many natural reasons why it actually happens. So, as I said, YMOC is not a, a new project. There is a lot of uh, special requirements uh, coming in. Uh, also, uh, Java evolves, developer tools evolve, and the more specifically, applications evolve. So for us these days, uh, basically, APIs are everywhere, software is everywhere, and uh, uh, more, all uh, the approaches have changed. So 11 years ago, it was rare that somebody would have adopted continuous integration. I mean, not uh, having a build server, but having a real uh, continuous integration process. Now we talk about continuous delivery, continuous deployment, uh, uh, progressive delivery, various kinds of A-B testing, and also uh, various approaches to managing the software. So it can be infrastructure as code, uh, you can use uh, special tools and special uh, frameworks uh, like uh, Kubernetes or Docker for deployments, you can use public clouds. Of course, you want to adopt uh, DevOps methodologies, you want to shift left and have a lot of development and testing happen in, in, in your development teams. So the specifics of the development has changed at the moment. And there is a lot of new tools that appeared uh, to address uh, these requirements. Uh, so. Um, I can mention quite a few. So if you are in the Java world, you may know about mock server, you may know about test containers, which basically puts your system in Docker. Uh, we will talk about it a bit, little bit later. Um, also, there are cloud native solutions like Microx, uh, and all of them uh, address API mocking use case. Also, there is a lot of products around these days. Uh, there are big and popular uh, products like uh, Postman, the implementations in different IDEs like IntelliJ ID, uh, Visual Studio that embed some API mocking capabilities out of the box. Uh, the same basically uh, for other languages and technologies. So for example, Spring Boot, uh, Spring Contracts have uh, some bits of API mocking right away uh, and same for many other technologies. So the layout became super complicated and um, uh, there is still demand to have some consolidation. Like in many other projects, uh, there is there are some standards uh, going on. And for us, uh, when we talk about modern applications, uh, of course, it's all about APIs. So everyone uses APIs and everyone relies on APIs. So for Wiremock and for other API simulation tools, uh, currently as we see, they are being used everywhere. And hence uh, the demand for different unification. You have many tools, you have many your own projects, uh, you might have many technology stacks. And if there is no alignment and unification, it could uh, quickly become a mess uh, that is super difficult to maintain. <clears throat> um, and actually, it, it's made worse uh, by change of how development flows uh, work, because now, instead of common uh, case when we do some unit testing, then integration testing, then system testing, then we pass everything to the release candidates, then a separate team does all kinds of acceptance tests, et cetera, et cetera. So everything changes at the moment. If you talk about continuous delivery, et cetera, we need to do all the tests uh, as quickly as possible, and many tests, many uh, uh, types of tests should be actually happening quickly during the development and hence uh, the large uh, shift left movement, uh, especially in quality assurance in industry. So with YMOC, with test containers, with other tools, actually it became normal that when you write unit test, actually you write integration test, actually you write system test if you have a uh, full system mocked or emulated uh, in a container and uh, there is no such separation anymore. Um, Wiremock and other tools actually enabled it to do fast. Now these containers uh, there are even more. Another part that could simplify uh, the current ecosystem is of course open standards. Because uh, we saw many tools using APIs uh, um, along uh, something like 10 years ago, the first implementations of Swagger uh, and uh, other tools that actually tried to unify and standardize how APIs work, especially REST APIs. And uh, there were a lot of developer tools created for that. These developer tools are 
portable and uh, when it all comes to API mocking, people will want uh, API mocking to be portable too, because for them it doesn't really matter in which language uh, you write the client code, whether it's .NET, Java, C++, Rust, they basically want to test the same service, connect to the same service, and hence for them uh, it would be super expensive to use different uh, mocking uh, implementations or different uh, server sites. So this is why there is demand on some unification that actually impacts YMOC quite a lot. We have, as I said, multiple implementations, but unfortunately these implementations are not very well aligned with each other. Before we continue, are there any questions? I guess not, but just checking. So if you have any questions, just ask in the chat. We will be able um, uh, to answer them. And yeah, let's continue. Um, so what actually changes with YMOC at the moment? Uh, so first of all, um, yeah, there is a number of directions uh, that have been clear in the community for a few years and that I emphasized now. So first of all, improving developer experience, which means basically the improving development experience for your applications, not just for you using a single unit framework or a single technology stack. You as developer should be able to use YMOC everywhere. Also, there is effort towards open source community consolidation that should enable um, this developer experience, enable uh, unification between projects, and at the same time help us to onboard more contributors and more individual and company participants to the projects. Last but not least, uh, there is actually growing the ecosystem because we see the need in YMOC, uh, you know, all modern frameworks and all modern technology stacks. And without a strong community, it's uh, super difficult to maintain that. So while uh, these three directions are listed separately, in uh, fact, uh, they are interconnected with each other. And in fact, they pursue the same goal, the well-being uh, of the community and also great experience for those for everyone who uses the project, adopts it, extends it, and customizes for their needs. Just a few items that uh, happen on the developer experience side at the moment. Uh, so first of all, it might sound odd, but we start uh, from documentation because um, uh, YMOC documentation is being quite heavily used by developers and uh, that documentation could uh, definitely see a lot of improvements, especially when we talk about uh, the ecosystem. So in the recent months um, in the community, we put quite a lot of efforts to make the documentation more simple to support more use cases. And if you navigate here, you can see that now we have a landing that provides you with some uh, kinds of catalog of key items which you can navigate by use case, by technology, and you can find a lot of answers and details here for different technologies, for different implementations. You can find something. There is a lot of work, but at least it's there. Also, we had support for multiple versions because for a long time, uh, YMOC 3 was around, but uh, there was no documentation published. Now it's available uh, on the same website. You can try it out. Uh, you can try out the new features, which are already available in better release. And if you experience some issues, you can easily share your experiences. For example, there is report an issue button, which takes you directly to the documentation page that helps us to track where it is and you can improve it. Uh, and you can also contribute to the page if it's needed. So for the documentation, currently there is a lot of content to be cre created, but at least we improved uh, how it looks uh, for users and how you can find the content uh, you actually need. Uh, more changes definitely to come, and I think that it's actually a big improvement already. Another thing uh, that we added um, is API templates library, because what we see a lot of integrations happen with standard external services. For example, if you have GitHub, GitLab, all these services need some adoptions, um, some integrations. 
and if you want to use WiMock for them, it's not uh, easy if you don't have a ready-to-go API mocking definition. And what we did, we created standard API mocking definitions for something like 2000 uh, services that you can find on this site. Uh, there is a lot of uh, various uh, common solutions, especially for public cloud services, and for each um, service, you can find some uh, API definitions that you can uh, easily use. So, for example, for Medium, etc., there is uh, YMOG JSON, which is a big file that you can download, and it's basically a YMOG definition for all common requests, and you can get it right away. All these definitions are open source, open for contributions. You can also add your services. Uh, but yeah, from what we see, it actually saves time uh, to a lot of developers that depend on public services. If you have a private service and have uh, want to have a similar setup, you can either use Vimo Cloud or you can just fork this website and actually run your own database. It's super easy uh, to set it up. Another important thing uh, we have added recently and that uh, should actually help is uh, better extensibility. So currently, Tom, uh, the founder of uh, uh, YMOC actually works on better extension engine for YMOC 3, which would add features like auto discovery, tracing of APIs, and proper uh, loading so that it becomes easier to develop and actually uh, apply various extensions to YMOC. Many of new features, including, for example, GraphQL support, JPC support, will be coming through extensions. So it's our interest uh, to have a, a better um, engine for that uh, in YMOC and uh, there is a lot of development here. Um, you can find uh, information about the new engine and changes in the documentation. And there, again, it's a living document. There is a lot of changes being claimed in 3.x. And please feel free to contribute if you're interested in this topic. So in the beginning of June, Bas Dijkstra actually presented how to develop extensions. And be sure it will be even easier in the next uh, generations of YMOC. What is else uh, important here is yeah, that uh, all the developer experience, etc., is actually driven uh, by the roadmap and it's uh, discussed in the community. So if you use YBOC, if you hit any obstacles, you can always go to our channels, for example, to YMOC and just submit the ticket. Now um, uh, for the issue tracker, you can easily find things, for example, enhancement uh, requires bug reports, so there are standard templates that you can use. And if you need uh, more help, you can always go to our community Slack with a lot of discussions. There we created help uh, channel uh, that actually intends to help uh, developers if they're stuck with YMOG. So for any question, uh, uh, you can just go here and ask. And um, moreover, there is database on Stack Overflow, uh, and uh, there are more support channels that are available if uh, you're interested. So if uh, you use YMOC, if you hit any obstacles, please let, please let us know, and uh, we try to make it as easy as possible. So on the community side, and there is also quite a lot of things happening because you cannot uh, easily scale the community without providing uh, a proper framework. When I actually joined YMOC as a company, I realized that there is a lot that needs to be done. Uh, so we started from the point when there are many repositories. These repositories are located elsewhere. These repositories are quite complicated, not always maintained. Uh, the implementations are not compatible with each other in terms of configuration files, in terms of behavior, feature-wise. And uh, this is something we would need to improve to provide better experience. And no wonder if you have such uh, technology layout uh, as a um, uh, repository set, uh, as a implementation set, you do not have a single community for YMOG. So for example, YMOG Java and YMOG.net have completely isolated communities, uh, isolated channels. Uh, most of other implementations have no channels at all. So for a user, it's quite difficult uh, to operate in this environment, especially if you, define, uh, if you use multiple technology stacks. As a consequence, it's also really difficult to understand what's going on because all the implementations, uh, all the extensions, they evolve in different directions. 
and for any potential contributor who wants to enhance Wiremock, who wants to address issues, it's a big challenge to discover the repository, to understand how to contribute to this particular repository, whether you need to sign a CLA, whether there are special ceremonies to be followed, and whether the repository is alive to start with, because many repositories are de facto uh, not evolving anymore. Um, and uh, yeah, we wanted to address that, and uh, um, uh, we actually did quite a lot of progress uh, on that uh, since the beginning of the year. Uh, so uh, in January, uh, the community Slack was introduced. Uh, so it's a uh, channel uh, which you can easily access by going to slackwiremock.org. It's a redirect link to our registration. And now we have uh, uh, more than 600 people there. There is a lot of lively channels, including the help one, also various kinds of contributing channels, by technology channels. Uh, so there is a lot of interesting things going on. The same for the community. We basically started the framework from scratch. Uh, but uh, there is a lot of things uh, that have been already introduced. So, for example, yeah, we have quite common features like contributor community governance document that describes how decisions are made, how maintainers make decisions in their companies, etc. It's super important if you want to onboard more contributors. And uh, also, there are common things like code of conduct. Uh, there is uh, community management dashboard that, that highlights uh, what we actually need to do as a community. And for example, if you're a maintainer, if you do, uh, need some community channel or some implementation, you can just create a ticket there and I will be happy to help. Uh, more importantly, uh, yeah, we started social media accounts. It might seem not necessary to an open source developer, but actually uh, it's quite useful to do outreach, to promote new content to provide contributing opportunities and to actually become visible in the ecosystem. So now we have uh, all kinds of channels uh, and we promote Wimog through these channels. So for example, this uh, presentation is streamed to Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, even if uh, it's quite uh, an internal presentation for uh, whomever is interested. Um, what is even more important is that now we have a public roadmap. Because before that, as a, for many other projects, it wasn't clear where YMOC is going. And we put in some effort to actually highlight the key initiatives that happen in the project. Uh, for example, um, in terms of uh, YMOC Java, in terms of uh, other YMOC implementations. And we put all the key initiatives we currently have in the community on a single GitHub project. So you can find uh, um, um, the efforts which are currently in progress or in preview and uh, waiting for feedback. Um, and uh, also, um, uh, there are some items that we are about starting soon. Uh, if you're interested in a particular technology for in a particular repository, you can apply a bunch of filters, but all key items, uh, we try to track them here, and uh, it's uh, a good addition uh, for the repository-based tracing, uh, so you can find a lot of information here. Uh, what is important to mention is that all these items, basically, they depend on contributions. So there is no commitment on dates, on a fact delivery on its own. So please do not uh, consider all these items as a commitment. Uh, these items will happen only if there are people interested uh, in them. And of course, it's a good uh, opportunity for you if you're interested in a particular feature. So for example, soon we will be doing a GraphQL request matching. There is actually already an implementation of an extension in Kotlin, just announced uh, one or two weeks ago. And we want to also make it a part of the community. So if you're interested in GraphQL uh, matching and mocking, please let us know. There is an opportunity. The same for gRPC, et cetera. And this is a benefit of this roadmap because we will be showing all key initiatives that you actually can contribute to. Or if you're interested as a stakeholder, you can also just uh, participate and even drive these activities if you want. For why mock ecosystem? Um, any questions so far? Oh, yeah, Simon, I mentioned, uh, yeah. Uh, that uh, there is a group ID change ticket. Yes, that's right. Uh, we also want uh, to streamline our Maven Central a bit uh, because right now, yeah, it's 
quite complicated because everyone uses different locations in Maven Central on GitHub packages. And we also want to have a centralized structure so that everyone uh, can easily find all the components and that uh, there is some governance uh, put for that. Uh, so we can uh, ensure sustainability of all the extensions. Okay, uh, back to Wiremock ecosystem. Uh, so again, uh, we want to make Wiremock accessible uh, to developers regardless of their technology stacks. And right now, while we have a lot of technologies, it's uh, not easy to say what actually works well and what's not. So for example, we know for a fact that uh, the Android implementation and guidelines, it needs a major update. Uh, there are two competing implementations for Rust, uh, many other implementations, for example, for Golang, for Node.js, so they basically act as a Docker wrapper, uh, while other implementations like Python just uh, uh, try to set up a jar and interact uh, directly with it. So there is some alignment that would be needed, and we actually started uh, doing so. Uh, the first idea for us is, of course, talk to maintainers of active implementations and actually do some kind of unification uh, that uh, would be beneficial for everyone. So for example, uh, setting the same configuration formats, same setting the same uh, REST APIs, uh, various kinds of observability events, for example, for open telemetry, CLI interfaces if needed, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, there is a lot of advantages for that, for users that use multiple technology stacks, which is fortunately or not uh, a default these days, because you do front end, you do back end, uh, um, and also, uh, normally, when you do cloud native de deployments, you have at least two or three technologies uh, just for the implementation part. It's good because you're in containers, but uh, for testing purposes, you still need to master all these technologies. So having uh, unified APIs and unified standards uh, definitely makes sense. Moreover, there is a lot of developer tools uh, for YMOC that are already out there. So maybe you have seen uh, some tools like Wiremock Inspector that was released uh, uh, just a few months ago and uh, other tools um, that it could actually help uh, users of all Wiremock ecosystems. The problem that uh, right now these tools are specialized for one implementation. They cannot talk uh, to each other. And I believe that we should actually um align uh, uh, all these tools and make it possible through unification to use the same tools for any implementation so we started uh, a few efforts on that uh, there is uh, a repository for the specification uh, that I, I plan to evolve uh, we had some initial collaboration with uh, for example ymog.net and ymog python maintainers and hopefully it will keep growing like that um Going in technical directions, um, there are a few other items that we would like to have for consultation. So one of uh, items for us is actually to having one uh, is to have one implementation that would address most of the cases. Uh, so right now, for any language, uh, any technology stack, you need to either integrate or reuse uh, the implementation somehow by, by various adapters, and it's quite complicated. Also, other major items on our roadmap is, of course, uh, adding more protocols. So gRPC, GraphQL is something in the works. There is already a gRPC converter. There is already a GraphQL extension that is available. I also have a prototype of cloud events implementation. And hopefully, more protocols will be available soon. On the uh, technical side, uh, there are also quite uh, a few important projects. So there is YMOC3, uh, about uh, uh, which you can uh, join a presentation by Tom next week. So it's basically a new version of YMOC that would uh, drop a lot of technical depth and at the same time introduce a lot of new capabilities, including extensibility, API matching, and also troubleshooting. Abilities. So these are key items that we have on the list. And yeah, again, this is a really top level view. So for fine grain view, you can go to our roadmap and uh, find it there. But ultimately, every component that we have in our ecosystem uh, have, has their own milestones, has uh, their own release cycles. So there is a lot more things that are going on and uh, which we would be happy to highlight there, but we definitely need inputs from the maintainers and contributors about what is important to highlight. So for me, 
um, one of the things that I have been using for quite a while until now, and what uh, I believe is a main uh, thing uh, to focus in the coming weeks is actually having Wiremark uh, being put in a container. Why it's important? Because right now we have so many different implementations, it's so difficult to manage them. But if we had uh, an efficient implementation in Java, uh, if you could put it uh, in a container, for example, with uh, fine-tuned uh, GDK, uh, like uh, Adoptium, uh, or like, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, or like, uh, for example, uh, Quarkus, etc., it would uh, make it more easier for us to maintain that uh, creating multiple implementations. And what we talked uh, uh, about for quite a while in the community that the path that seems to be the most feasible for us is actually taking test containers as a carrier framework. Because the problem for us is that if we put YMOC in the container, it's totally possible. We have YMOC Docker implementation that is available to everyone, that is maintained well. It basically, it does its job quite well. But the problem there is that uh, using API mocking isn't just provisioning a container. There is a lot of features so that are accessible only through APIs. There is a lot of advanced use cases which you need to provision. There is also a lot of complex cases for packaging, for example, if you need extensions. So it's not as straightforward as I might look. And hence, a wrapper framework would be needed that would provision the container uh, for the test, tear it down. And for that, um, test containers is actually a solution that is super popular in the Java world and popular in other technology stacks. And uh, we are doing uh, integrations across the board with test containers. Uh, so far, mm, uh, yeah, I cannot ask how many people are familiar with test containers, but I hope quite a lot by now. And for us, it's basically a container management layer and also a framework integration layer that can be used uh, uh, for um, testing. And uh, shortly after I started with YMOC, I actually created a test containers model for Java. So it's basically a Java implementation of the container that is quite flexible. It's currently in alpha, but we are going towards 1.0 release. And it mostly re-implements the interfaces that YMOC Java has, but the implementation is actually in a container. So you can just say that uh, I need um, Test container, it's a GUN5 example. So you say, I need a test container. This test container so would be YMOC. I use version 2.35. I put some mapping, and then everything happens. And the advantage uh, for that, that uh, this implementation is actually available for multiple technology stacks. Uh, so as long as you use test containers, you can actually port uh, to different implementations. So for example, now there are official frameworks for Java, Golang, .NET, uh, Node.js, and uh, many, many other languages. So actually there are more implementations. Uh, some of them are just not official. Uh, I started thinking with C++ implementation, but be sure you do not want to see the code. Um, so the advantage of test containers is that um, it's actually not just a generic container thing. You can customize it. You can uh, provide quality of life APIs. And for uh, for YMOC, we can add many features uh, and make it easier to use. Uh, so in my examples, I can show them later if we have some time. Uh, but yeah, it actually becomes quite flexible. For example, you can uh, add an extension within a single click uh, without actually messing up your dependency tree. And uh, even more for other languages, because the same extension, the same uh, YMOC Java can be now used for other languages uh, so that uh, there is no feature differences. And uh, the only thing one would need is to create proper SDK on the top of uh, test containers. What is quite important is that basically it's not just a, a single container, but it's actually a support for Docker Compose and hence provisioning uh, clusters of uh, containers that uh, can communicate with each other. So, for example, you can easily put a YMOC 
in front of existing service, uh, for example, also test container uh, like database or existing server, and just um, you know, proxy some requests, for example, if you need to inject uh, failures, etc., with MIMO. So this implementation won't be just Java. We already have a pull request uh, uh, for, um, uh, yeah, I'm just um, skipping a few slides. So we already have a pull request for Python implementation. We have draft for Rust. We have a plan to do YMOC model for .NET, which would support both YMOC Java and YMOC.NET uh, under the hood and uh, many other implementations uh, that uh, should appear if there is interest uh, for the community. One thing uh, about this implementation that is actually not slow because uh, YMOC takes some time to start up, especially when we have to complex configurations, etc. And uh, thanks to ability of test containers to cache the images, to suspend them between tests, it actually becomes much more convenient. So for me, uh, having YMOC a part of this uh, test containers ecosystem that is already widely used uh, for various projects. Uh, test containers is one of the most quickly adopted uh, Java projects uh, that is being integrated in different frameworks. So I think for us as YMOC, it's important to be there. And actually for us, the community and the ecosystem, it should uh, uh, simplify uh, the adoption and uh, should save a lot of time. So yeah, I already mentioned the proxy, but yeah, <laughs> it's definitely possible. Uh, so uh, for other implementations, hopefully we will have Java release 1.0 in a week or two. I still have uh, a few comments that I need to address, for example, simplifying management of extensions, simplifying KPIs. Uh, there is, as I said, pull request by Mike Waits. Uh, so if you use Python with YMOC, it's definitely an opportunity <laughs> to share feedback. And for .NET and Rust, uh, stay tuned for uh, the pull requests. Uh, they're coming quite soon. So uh, any questions so far? Yeah. Nothing in the for chat local yet. stack, indeed. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, one thing for local stack, uh, yeah, as Simon mentioned, it works really well. Um, and actually, uh, what is currently happening? So, uh, there is an official models program, and some models are highlighted as official ones. So we try to do the same for YMOC in the moment. Uh, we actually did uh, quite a lot of checklists for certification, like adding Java 8 support, which is actually another another reason to consider test containers and YMOC, because we will be dropping uh, Java 8 um, in a YMOC 3 release. So it's basically the only way to continue if you use if you want to get access to modern features. And yeah. Test containers is actually awesome. I have been an early user and contributor to it. Um, and I think that the first time I used uh, YMOC and test containers together was something like 2009 uh, when I was uh, working on the Jenkins uh, uh, plugin installation manager tool. So yeah, uh, it's definitely quite exciting combination. And if you're interested in developer tooling, please uh, try it out and actually share your feedback. So for YMOC 3, as I mentioned, next week we will have a presentation by Tom. So I don't want uh, uh, to spend a lot of time today uh, talking about what's going on. If you're interested, again, you can discover everything uh, in our repositories. So if you go to YMOC, there is actually a pinned uh, YMOC 3.0 issue. I'm well aware that there are so many issues that we need to take a look at so we will be doing scraps etc after ymoc 3 release uh, but yeah uh, so you can find a lot of things here also we have a project that actually highlights uh, the key bits that are being landed landed to ymoc 3 and uh, i believe the expectation is the next month also if everything works out as we expected so if you're interested join uh, us for the next meetup Okay, regarding takeaways, um, so of course, YMOC keeps evolving. There is a lot of new features being added, a lot of new capabilities. I didn't mention some bits, uh, but uh, that uh, 
also in flight and added quite recently. So for example, um, we have added a few more extensions to YMOC GitHub organization. And if you consider developing extensions, you can just join uh, this repository right away. Another thing uh, that we have uh, in the flight is actually Kubernetes deployment. So now we have Helm chart, uh, which we again transferred uh, uh, from one of the maintainers. And the plan is to have a, an official release so that uh, there will, would be a Helm chart that helps to deploy YMOC and Kubernetes. Again, uh, this is something like basic functionality. If you need operators with a lot of advanced features, definitely. Uh, please feel free to reach out and contribute, but uh, at least basic deployments would be official uh, uh, quite soon. So, yeah. Uh, we have a question in the chat, Oleg. Yeah. Here Let's uh, bring it up. There you go. Actually, I do not see it. Oh. Okay. Are we planning to reuse existing GraphQL extension? It's a really good question because I don't know. Uh, so they think that uh, there is, uh, uh, so just a few weeks ago, there was a release uh, of the extension, uh, YMOC GraphQL. So you can see that uh, there is actually quite a lot of references. Uh, yeah. I'm just putting a little bit more keywords. I guess this one, or maybe not. Yeah, not this one. So I, I actually found another extension attempt, <laughs> which I missed before. So if you look uh, a lot on uh, GitHub, you can actually find uh, quite a lot of the things. Uh, but uh, yeah, what I'm actually looking for is just an exception. Oh, I think that, uh, yeah. When my memory betrays me, I can just go to Twitter. Uh -huh. So I'm looking for that, but yeah, to answer your question, Capish, yeah, he it is. So right now we need to decide what we do about it. I reached out to the maintainer. I'm trying uh, to set up a discussion. Uh, the problem is that uh, this extension right now exists only in Kotlin and only in Japanese. So definitely some localization would be needed before it could be added to the repositories. But I actually think that it would be an interesting implementation. The question is whether we can actually maintain it as a, a Kotlin one, because uh, yeah, for Kotlin, uh, yeah, you have a lot of runtime dependencies. It's literally impossible to mock these runtime dependencies. So yeah, maintaining it in uh, such implementation uh, in the future, it will be super complicated. And maybe we will find another solution. Um, so any other questions? OK, then just a call to action. Actually, this is a really good time to contribute. And as I said in the beginning of the presentation, uh, we actually, yeah, I'm not sharing my screen anymore, right? Mm -hmm. You're not sharing your okay. screen anymore now. We can. OK. Well, now I do. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there you are. Well, OK. So at least I haven't been kicked. OK. Uh, so here. Uh, yeah, for the extensions, um, yeah, again, take a look. And for contributing guidelines, actually, we put some uh, effort to help others uh, uh, to contribute. So if you use uh, um, YMOC, if you want to participate, you can just go to this uh, location. So there are some summary of different ways to contribute, and not just code, but also documentation, advocacy, testing, artwork, et cetera, et cetera. So all kinds of contributions are always valuable. And if you're interested to contribute, yeah, just join on Slack. There is help on contributing channel where you can find all the guidelines and support. And yeah, there is an extensive contributor guide that covers different uh, contribution use cases. We keep it on GitHub at the moment. Uh, so again, uh, uh, please uh, take a look. Uh, there are references to newcomer friendly issues. Uh, there are references to repository specific contributing guidelines, which are available in many other repositories. 
So I think it's a good time to contribute. And well, as I keep saying, it's always a good time to contribute. To contribute. So if you're interested, do not wait for October 1st, etc. Because actually these days you can find a lot more availability from maintainers to provide some mentorship and provide uh, some feedback uh, for your changes. And yeah, thanks to all the YMO contributors. At the moment, I do not have a team photo even for our team. Well, I have no group photo even for myself. Uh, so eventually, if we meet uh, at one of the conferences, etc., let's take a selfie together, and then we will have a panel of different selfies. One thing that uh, needs to be mentioned is that yeah, now we have some Wymok schwag like T-shirts you have just seen, uh, also cups uh, and uh, many other things. Thanks to Sarah for organizing that, and uh, I believe that soon we will be able to distribute uh, these things uh, to all active contributors. So, fingers crossed. And, yeah. yeah, we have a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. And for October 1st, yes, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, just uh, join us. So I hope this uh, October, October 1st, we actually organized a few interesting things for everyone. So stay tuned for October. Any other questions before we close down? OK, one link uh, I definitely want to share with everyone uh, is uh, uh, this one, mm. uh, what's going on? Okay, it just takes some time. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, if you're interested in contributing, if you're using uh, YMOC, please join Slack YMOC org uh, uh, because yeah, there is a lot of active discussions. Also, this uh, uh, membership in the Slack channel is a part of my KPI, so please join. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, yeah, seriously, this channel, I believe uh, that uh, it's getting better and better with more conversations happening. And we will be actually bringing uh, uh, maintainers of other projects, etc., to the same community resource. So hopefully it will uh, become YMOC central or whatever for the community purposes. So. OK. Thanks all for your time. And yeah, hopefully it was interesting as a kind of overview. Mm -hmm. and thanks a lot, Sarah, for hosting. Yeah, it was great. Thanks for having me with you. OK. okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'll end uh, the broadcast. And thanks again. See you on Slack. Bye, guys. <laughs>